Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are here on New Year's Eve night getting ready to usher in a brand new year. We are so excited tonight. Uh, the spirit and the presence of God is already resting in this place and we're looking forward to connecting with all of you tonight on this amazing uh, night that the Lord has given to us. We are, uh, we are just here just to bless you and to uh, really just invite you into our worship experience tonight as we prepare uh, to go into the year 2021. The Lord has really given us the grace to get through some very trying and troubling, troubling times. And uh, so we just feel uh, very blessed to have this opportunity to come before you tonight with thanksgiving in our hearts to bless the name of Jesus, to glorify him, to exalt his holy name. Uh, the Lord has just been so good to us, and uh, I know that you feel the exact same way. I see that many of you are connecting with us. I see uh, Sister Felisa. I see my mom, my dad. God bless you, Minister Roshana. Uh, you're going to be hearing from her in a little bit. Uh, Pastor Lillian, God bless you. I see many of our regular viewers that are connecting with us. We are so happy to have you joining us tonight. Uh, I see some new names that may be popping up as well. God bless you. Welcome to Living Waters International. Again, this is our New Year's Eve celebration uh, service. This is the service that the Lord has given to us uh, to give you a word for the upcoming season and the upcoming year. Amen. We're just so happy again to have all of you with us. The power and the presence of God is going to meet us in this place and he's going to meet you right there in your homes. I see uh, Pastor Lillian has joined us. You're going to hear from her as well in just a little while in the service. Uh, I see uh, my, uh, my cousin's wife. Uh, we call her Bebe. Good to have you. All the way from Mississippi, my cousin Ron. There he is. I saw your name just pop up. We love you all so much. Hope you're all doing really well. Listen, we are going to have a marvelous time in the presence of God. You're not only going to be hearing from me tonight, but you're also going to be hearing from some of our uh, leaders in the church. Some of our ministers, one of our deacons uh, are going to be sharing uh, some very encouraging words with all of you tonight. And uh, so you don't want to miss it. Please share the video. Let all of your Facebook family and friends tune in and listen as you are as well, so that they can get the message that the Lord is speaking out tonight. Can all of you hear me clearly? If you can, give me a thumbs up. If you can hear me clearly. We're kind of in a new room tonight. Uh, we're not in our regular uh, building that we've used uh, in the last several months. We thought we'd switch it up a little bit tonight. Uh, we had some other uh, issues going on with the other location, but we thank God uh, that we are here live, ready to uh, receive all that the Spirit of God has for us in the year 2021. Are you ready for year 2021? Are you excited? Are you standing in great expectation? Are you believing God to do some new things, some great things in your life? My God, I don't believe that we have survived 2020 for no reason at all. I believe that something great is on the horizon. I just believe by the Spirit of God that God has some new things for us, some things that we've never seen, some things that he's going to be pouring out upon the church, upon the body of Christ, and even upon your life in a very special way. Amen. Again, please share that video as you come on and connect with us live. Uh, we're going to have a time uh, of worship here in just a few moments, but we want to give as many of you an opportunity to connect live uh, before we start tonight's service. Uh, we're going to open in prayer in just a few moments, and uh, then we'll have uh, our faithful uh, worship leader, Minister Pamela Gordon, to come and lead us in our time of praise and worship, and then you'll be hearing uh, from some of our church leaders uh, as we continue to go forward in tonight's service. Now listen, the Lord has really uh, given us the opportunity uh, to gather here tonight. I think it's a very special occasion, not just for this church, not just for all of us that are tuning in tonight, but for all of us all over the world. 
Because as you know, there are so many that did not make it. There are so many of our brothers and sisters that have passed on to go on to be with the Lord. There are just so many families that are still hurting and uh, so many families that are grieving over loved ones that they've lost in this year. So you and I uh, should certainly be grateful. We should be thankful uh, that the Lord has allowed us to remain alive in the land of the living and to have this great opportunity again uh, to experience a brand new year. Listen, the devil said you wouldn't make it. The devil said you would not make it out of 2020, but yet you're here. And you ought to give God a praise for that. You ought to lift your hands in glory. You ought to magnify the Lord with us. The devil said you would not make it. The devil said you would not live to see another year. But by the hand of God, by the grace of God, you are here tonight celebrating with us, lifting up the name of Jesus, giving him all of the glory and the honor that he rightfully deserves because he has brought us through all of the trials and tests and tribulations that we have had in this year. And now we know that God is doing some greater things in our midst. Well, listen, I'm going to open up in prayer. If you want to stand up on your feet with us right there in your homes, right there in your living room, wherever you are, we are going to invoke the presence of God and just allow the spirit of God to lead us into tonight's service. I don't know all of what God is going to do, but we're just here open and ready to receive uh, the unction of the Holy Spirit and to just follow his leading and his guiding into everything that he wants to uh, do in tonight's service. So I want you to stand, if you would, uh, so that we can touch and agree in prayer and just allow the presence and the divine providence of God to rest upon all that we are doing here tonight in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, God, with our hearts filled with thanksgiving, with our hearts filled with praise. We are so grateful that we have this opportunity tonight to worship you in spirit and in truth. We are so grateful, God, that you have sustained our lives, that you have preserved us, oh God, that you have given us another opportunity to experience another year. God, we know that you didn't have to do it. We know, Father, that you didn't have to give us the grace to experience a new season. And yet, here we are. And we give you all of the glory. We give you all of the praise, O oh God, for how you have watched over us, how you have protected us, how you have guided us, O oh God, through the flood, through the fire, through all of the trials and tests that we have faced. We thank you, God. We thank you that your word is true. We thank you, God, that you have all power. We thank you, God, that you have delivered us, that you have brought us out and brought us through everything that the devil set out against us. We thank you for your tender mercy. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that has covered us all this time, oh God. We thank you, God, for making ways out of no ways. We thank you, God, for withstanding the hand of the enemy. We thank you, God, oh God, for not allowing us to die prematurely. We thank you, God, for your purpose and your destiny that rests in our hearts. God, we ask you tonight to move by your spirit, move by your power, release an anointing, oh God, that destroys yokes and lifts burdens. Release your presence, oh God, all over the world. Release your presence through this broadcast tonight, Father. Send your ministering angels. Send help. Send deliverance. Send healing. Send encouragement, oh God. Set the captives free, Lord Jesus. Manifest yourself in the midst of your people tonight, God. Lift us up, God. Lift us up in the name of Jesus. Lift us high, God. Lift us up, God, as only you can. Oh, God, lift up our heads. Lift up our bodies, our spirit, oh, God. Lift us up as we go into this new year, God. Guide us by your spirit. Feed us on high. Let the praises go forth. Let the worship go forth like never before, God. 
in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Oh, we bless you tonight, God. We bless you tonight. We bless you tonight. We bless you tonight, God. We bless you tonight. We bless you tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless you tonight. We honor you tonight, God. We celebrate you tonight, God. Oh, yes, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful, God. You're wonderful. You're amazing, God. You're mighty, God. You're a wonder in our soul. And we glorify you tonight. We glorify you tonight, God. We glorify you tonight. It's by grace that we have made it through. It's by grace that we're still standing. It's by your grace, God, that we are here live tonight. It's by your grace. It's by your grace. Oh, yes, God. Oh, it's by your grace that we are here worshiping you, praising you, magnifying you, glorifying you, God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Move into every home tonight. Move into every home tonight, God. Move into every home tonight. Move in that house tonight, God. Move in that place. Let your presence and your spirit and your kingdom take up your abode, God. In that house tonight. In the name of Jesus. Wherever your people are watching. Wherever you find faith tonight, God. Touch it in the name of Jesus. Touch lives. Touch hearts, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Drive out devils. Drive out hindering spirits. Drive out familiar spirits. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. We triumph over the enemy. We triumph over the enemy. We bind the enemy on every side tonight. We bind the enemy on every side. In the north. In the south. In the east and in the west, we bind the enemy. We cover this service in your blood. In your blood. We cover this service in your blood. By your mighty hand. By your mighty power. Oh God, send the anointing. Send the anointing tonight. Send the anointing tonight. Send your word tonight. Let the praises go forth. Let the worship go forth. Like never before, God. Touch every man, touch every woman, touch every boy, touch every girl that is watching tonight. And God, we will rejoice in your awesome presence. We will lift you up on high for the mighty God that you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we love you. Oh, God, we love you. 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 We love you, we love you, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you, God. Oh, we couldn't have made it without you. Hallelujah. We couldn't have made it without you. We don't take it for granted, God. Oh, God, hallelujah. It's not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit, Lord, that we are here tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send a special anointing. A special grace upon this service tonight. And we will glorify you for all that you do, for all that you speak. We will lift you up, God. We will give you all of the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless him tonight. We bless him tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I don't know about you. I'm ready to praise the Lord. I'm ready to lift him up. I'm ready to magnify him. The Bible says, let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with us. Let's give him praise. Let's worship him. He is worthy of it all. I'll be back soon. Hallelujah. In just a moment. Glory to God. Amen. So exciting to be here. So excited to be here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we just bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. 
Are you a friend of God? You know, they when in the word it talks about Abraham being a friend. He was a righteous man, and he was a friend of God. Hallelujah. Are you a friend of God? Just clap your hands with me wherever you're at. Have a great night as we're going into this new year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. And is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. You are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call on. Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing, so amazing. He calls me friend, friend of God. I am, I am a friend of God, and I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Oh, it's amazing. He is so amazing, to him because I gotta get he got what I need <laughs> and I'm gonna get it hallelujah because we need him more and more to even get what we need sometimes you gotta go from level to level so if you gotta go to another level you're gonna need more God and that's all right chasing after you no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. Chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do I need you more and more I'm chasing after you oh more and more more and more More and more, more and more, more and more. I'm 
chasing after you no matter what i have to do because i need you more and more i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more i'm chasing after you more and more oh, I'm chasing after you More and more More and more Chasing after you Praising my way through just to be closer to you I'm chasing after you I'm chasing after you mm -hmm. Just praising my way through I'm praising and praising closer just a little bit closer after you. Hey, hey. I'm chasing after you. I'm praising my way through. Just to be closer to you. I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you I'm praising my way through Just to be closer to you I'm chasing after you I'm chasing after you Praising my way through Just to be closer to you I'm chasing after you Chasing, I'm chasing, I'm chasing I'm praising my way through to be closer to you. I'm chasing after you. Hey! More and more, more and more. More and more, more and more. more, and more. Jesus, you're all I need. Everything that we need is in him. Everything as we go into this new year, it's all in Jesus. Hallelujah. You're all I need. Every breath you breathe through me. And you're all I need. Let your rest Let your rivers flow through me. You're all I need. 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 Every breath.
let your rivers flow through me and you're all I need every breath you breathe to me and you're all I need let your rivers flow through me you're all I need you're all I need you're all I need you're all I need. And he said, if I be lifted, I will draw all men to me. You're my closest friend in your island. How my being, I wanna be closer. I need to be closer. If I be lifted, I will draw all men to me. You're my closest friend in your island. How my being, I wanna be closer, I need to be closer, I wanna be closer to thee, to thee, say you're all I need, every breath you breathe to me, and you're all I need, let your rivers flow through me, you're all I need. have my being. Hallelujah. Well, 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 God bless you. God bless you. We thank God once again for that amazing time of praise and worship that Minister Pam just offered up before the Lord and just ushered us into his wonderful presence. Uh, if you're just now joining us, you're in for a treat. The spirit of the Lord is moving mightily in this place. We welcome you again to our New Year's Eve celebration. We are standing in great expectation for all the things that God is going to pour out upon us in this new year and in this new season. I know we've come through a very turbulent time, but we are looking forward to something fresh and something new from the Lord and uh, we're just excited about it tonight. Amen. Again, if you're just now joining us, please uh, share your video. Let others uh, on your Facebook page uh, tune in as well so that they can receive the presence and the anointing of God that he is releasing in this atmosphere. Because we need the anointing. We need the presence of God like never before. We need a word from the Lord. And we certainly need to continue to magnify him and to praise him out of our mouths, out of the depths of our soul, uh, particularly when we look back on this season that we have just come through. So again, we just thank God for you. We bless you. Uh, we know that the Lord uh, is in full control regardless of what uh, has happened in the course of this year. We know that God uh, still has a plan to bless us, to renew us, to restore us, and uh, that's what we're going to uh, be sharing with you here in just a few moments uh, as we continue in tonight's service. Well, you just uh, heard from Minister Pam as she led us into our time of praise and worship. I'm actually going to ask her to return uh, to this uh, portion of the service because she has a short message uh, that she's going to be sharing with all of us tonight. I have asked uh, certain leaders in our ministry uh, to bring forth a word of encouragement so that way you're not just hearing from me, but you're also going to be listening and hearing uh, what the Spirit of God has placed in the hearts of some of our faithful leaders here at the church. And so I'm going to ask uh, Minister Pamela Gordon to come back once again uh, to share with us the brief message that the Lord has given to us to encourage us uh, as we move into the year 2021. And let me tell you, this is a time where we need to be encouraged. Amen. This is a time where we need 
to be lifted up. This is the time where we need new inspiration and new innovation in order for us to move forward in the agenda and the plan that God has for each of us. So as you open your hearts and as you open your minds, we are going to have Minister Pamela Gordon come now and share with us her message to lift us up for 2021. And then we have some others who are going to follow her with their word of encouragement as well. Minister Pam. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to be in this place tonight. You know, it's really, it truly is an honor because, you know, our pastor is always putting his heart out. And tonight he gave us the opportunity to share with you what the Lord has blessed us with. And tonight I'm going to have a few words of encouragement for you to help you get through just like he's done for me. I had a little incident of my own with the Lord and he told me to stop making excuses. So, uh oh, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> I just want to mention, so last week, if you were with us on Sunday, our pastor spoke about resetting our lives. You know, that we had to reset things, you know, like to, to redo, uh, things in our lives for the new year to make things better. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we all need to tighten up some things or get rid of some things, you know. So with that, the Lord had told me about not making some excuses. So I'm coming for you tonight to encourage you to make no excuses, to not reset your life. Make no excuses. Make some changes. Making no excuses, believing, remembering, or even knowing. There's no excuse to give an account for God when, when he has given us everything to lead us and guide us that's within his word. So I just want to share with you a few scriptures that encourage me to go on and to not make excuses. One of the things we need to remember that John 3, 16, made a, he made a statement to us. And I'm going to go ahead and read it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And John 3, 16 and 17. It says, For God gave, gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Might be saved. Make no excuses with that. If anyone, by the sound of my voice, who's out there today, if you have not given your life to Christ or accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, I say that you do that tonight before, don't even wait till tomorrow. Make no excuses for accepting Jesus because he's promised that he would give you an everlasting life. You know, Pastor mentioned there are many that have lost their lives because of COVID. And for those who were saved and have given their lives unto the Lord, they still have that eternal life that God promised them. So it's, it behooves us to accept Jesus Christ as we transition, as we're transitioning into 2021. Make no excuses. Accept Jesus. Because one thing you do have to know, tomorrow's not promised. So accept him tonight if you haven't done so already. Make no excuses. Habakkuk. He says something Habakkuk for, for me, something that, that I also need to do. And to remember, you know, that's something about here. People say, oh, I write notes all the time and I write and I journal. And I say, really? And I try and I stop and I hem and I ha. And then I forget something that I wanted to do. Something I said I was going to do in the new year and I totally forgot. Well, Habakkuk says, uh, the Lord gave unto the prophet. He said unto him. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. I mean, it's going to happen. It will happen. But something we want to do, and if I didn't say it, it's Habakkuk 2, um, verses 1 and 2. Um, I'm sorry, 2 and 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. 
You know, we, we as people, we tend to be in a hurry all the time. You know, that microwave thing, you know, we want it just like that. Well, God wants us to just, just to slow down for a minute. Write some things down. It's gonna, it, it will happen. Sometimes, you know, I know for myself, my memory fails me, you know, or I just play forget what I said I was going to do. And, and God wants us to write it down. Surely he knows. He knows the whole plan. He already said it, Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, you know, but he wants us to start writing notes, start writing your goals down. Something I said that I want to do, and I just started the other day, and it was just amazing. I'm like, wait, reset my life. I need to write down some things because I miss out on a lot of things because I forget about it or some things takes money, you know, you got to save for it. And if you're not putting the money away because you said this is what you wanted to do, well, you forget about it. And before you know it, you 50, you 60, you 70, whatever, however, whatever age it is, and you completely missed out on some things that you could have did. Now you're like, okay, now how am I going to squeeze this in this part of my life? Not dead yet, so you can still do it, Pam. You can still do it. But if we start writing down the vision, make it plain. Somebody else might pick it up. Whoever, whoever may pick it up and read it, they may see it and say, girl, didn't you say? You know what? That is right. I need to do X, Y, and Z. You know, some things we have to write down because we need to prepare for. We need to be in preparation for these things. God has a plan for us. And we have to not so much work him in. We, we got to work into his schedule because it's not our schedule. It's not our plan. It's his. But we need to write some things down. And then even to the degree some of those things we might write down, God might say, not that one. Scratch that one off and do this instead. But he tells us in Habakkuk to write it down and make it plain. So that then those who read it may run with it. They, that you might have a partner. You may not, but whichever. You and the Holy Ghost, that's the best partner you could ever have. You got to run with it. Go with it. But remember, don't make excuses. Don't make excuses for those things that we need to remember to do. And the third one is knowing. Don't make excuses about knowing. Knowing what? Let's read it and see what it says. In Romans 8 and 28, the word of God says, and we know, we know that all things work together for good yes. to them that love the Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That's a promise. He promised us that everything we do is going to work out for our good. Do we make mistakes? Yes. But it still can work out for our good. Nothing in Jesus is bad. Nothing he has is bad. So it's going to work out. But you have to make no excuses. Well, I didn't do it because they told me no. Well, forget them. Go to the next one. Can I share with you? My granddaughter needed to move. She had to move. They told her last night she had to be out today. Today she called nine places. And all of them told her no. She couldn't move in today until she got to the last one. She didn't give up. She didn't make excuses. They told her, oh, yes, you can move in today. What a, it was wonderful. It was joyous. It was awesome. Last night was a night of stress and not knowing and worry and, and all these things that were going through her mind. And I'm like, no, God's going to have something worked out. He's going to work it out. And he did. He worked it out. He worked it out so much so for her that she didn't even have to pay the first month's rent. Somebody else is paying it for her. Amen. You know, God had a plan Amen. and he worked it out. So make no excuses. When things don't look like what you think, what we think they should look like, because it's not with the natural eye that we should be looking. You know, that's one thing about Habakkuk. It was about faith. The just shall live by faith. Not what you see with your eyes. It's, in a, it's a spiritual thing. So we have to know. Make no excuses knowing that all things will work out for our good. It takes time. He said it'll, it'll tarry, though it may tarry. But it's in God's timing. 
and his time is always perfect. So make no excuses. Don't get angry. Don't blow things out of proportion. Breathe. And then ask yourself, what's really going on? What is really going on? Did you know that when we stop and turn the right puzzle piece in the right direction, it'll fit? And sometimes in our lives, we have to stop. Turn the puzzle piece so that it can fit into the right place. And that's okay. So you got it wrong right then, but you know what? You made a little adjustment and it worked out. It worked out for your good. So as we transition into this new year, let us not make excuses. Make no excuses for remembering, for knowing and believing. You know, so in conclusion, Matthew 6, 33 says this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. If we remember to write it down, make it plain, whatever it may be that God has for you, it'll fall in place. Just remember and know that it's working for your good and believe, believe that Jesus died just for you and I, that he shed his blood on Calvary's mountain just so that we may have a life and a life abundant. You know, it takes a little time. We got to work things out, but it shall be. When you stop and look back, you know, God, you were there all along. And it's a wonderful life. It is a wonderful life. So transitioning into 2021, make no excuses. God bless you. Happy New Year's. And I pray that everything you dream of comes your way. Praise God. Let's give God a praise for Minister Pam and that amazing message that she just delivered to all of us. No more excuses. We've got to move forward now. We've got to go into the greater glory. We've got to receive the greater portion of that which God has for us. And we've got to lay aside the excuses. In fact, I'm going to be sharing something along those lines tonight when I bring forth uh, the message that the Lord has given to me for us tonight as well. But again, we thank God for that uh, wonderful message that Minister Pam just shared with you. Now, you're going to be hearing several different messages tonight, and you want to grab hold of these nuggets that the Lord uh, is ministering through his people so, so that you can have something to hold on to as you go into the year 2021. See, you're not going to have a great year just because you're emotional. You need a word from the Lord. You really need a word from the Lord. You're not going to have success. You're not going to be able to overcome the powers of the enemy just because you're happy tonight, just because it's New Year's Eve. You've got to anchor your soul in the word of the Lord. And so, again, we want to encourage you to grab hold of what the Lord is speaking through all of these of vessels that he is using tonight to encourage you and to uh, strengthen your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for the days that are ahead. Well, now we've got another uh, faithful member of our church who's going to come and share the word of the Lord with you. Uh, he serves in our deacon's ministry. In fact, he's the uh, head deacon in our church. He's very faithful uh, just been an outstanding leader in our church and we're looking forward to having him come and share with us as well. I think this may be his first time uh, sharing live uh, here on Facebook Live with our audience. Uh, so we're looking forward to hearing from him. His name is Dominic Hunter. And again, he is the head deacon of our church and we're going to have him come at this time to share with us what the Spirit of God has laid upon his heart for us tonight. Again, receive these nuggets so that they can strengthen you in what God has for you next. Deacon Hunter. Amen. Hello, everybody. God wants everybody to know that Satan, the enemy, does not have a chance. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, 
lets us know God created man in his image and likeness, male and female. See, God wants to look, look at us and see himself in us. If Satan, the enemy, has a chance against us, then God can't see himself in us because Satan, the enemy, does not have a chance against God. And he did supply us with everything we need to put a stop to the enemy. So everything the enemy does doesn't work. He gave us everything we need. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God blessed us. He did this in the beginning. A blessed is endowed with divine favor and protection. Now endowed means God supplied it to us. He equipped us with it. He provided it for us. He furnished us with it. It's grace. It's a gift. This is divine favor and protection that God gave to us in the beginning. Because he made sure Satan, the enemy, does not have a chance against us. In Psalm chapter 23, verse 5, it lets us know God prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Now picture a table with everything you want and need on it. It's up to you to walk over to that table, grab a hold of it, pick it up, and use it, and hold on to it. I'm talking about the Word of God. That's everything we need, and God gave it to us. But it's up to us to pick it up and grab a hold of it and use it, because it's too much for the enemy. He can't stop it. That's why God gave it to us. But it's up to us to grab a hold of it and use it and understand it and meditate on it and hold it in our heart and in our mind and in our mouth. In Psalms 138 verse 2 lets us know the Lord magnifies his word above all his name. Yes. This is how powerful the word is. And it's too much for the enemy. And that's why God gave it to us. But it's up to us to grab a hold of it, study it, and learn it, and, and use it. And see, what magnified means is God made it great. It's something great. God glorifies it. And it's up to us to grab a hold of it and use it. We have it. It's available. God gave it to us in the beginning. In John chapter 1, verse 1, lets us know the Word of God is God. It lets us know in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with Him in the beginning. See, this is something everybody needs to grab a hold of. The Word of God is God. And, and it's, 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 it's too much for the enemy. That's why God gave it to us. See, we need to grab a hold of them and hold on to that God gave us something that is too much for the enemy. But, but it's up to us to grab a hold of it. It's up to us to learn it. It's up to us to keep it in our heart, in our mind, and in our mouth and use it. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, it clearly lets us know God turns what the enemy means for ill into good. And that's all, see, we need to grab a hold of that's all the enemy means is ill. So if God turns what he means for ill into good, then we need to understand it doesn't matter what he does. It doesn't matter how it looks, sounds, and feels. God is going to turn it into good. That's what his word says. This is from God. And his word is the truth. In Romans 8.28, it lets us know it all works together for the good. 
to those that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. Now, all means everything we need to understand. That means no matter what comes against us, no matter what it looks like, sounds like, and feels like, it, God, it's going to work for our, together for our good. But we need to understand it's, it's according to, to us that are called according to his purpose. And it's, to, it's for us to love God. See, if you're not obeying his word, if you're not in his word, then you don't love God. Because his word also lets us know, if you love me, obey my commandments. So if you're not in his word, if you're not obeying his word, it's not going to work for you. But you, you, we should want to obey his word because it can't be stopped. It, it, it's too much for the enemy. There's not any, anything, everything that exists on this earth, everything that exists, period, cannot stop the word of God. Because the word of God is God. And he lets us know that. But it's up to us to grab a hold of it and use it. And that's when it all works together for our good. It clearly lets us know to those that love God. If you're not, if you're not in his will, which is his word, then uh, it's not going to work for you. This is where, every, where a lot of people make their mistakes. They forget how important the word of God is. And, and they take it too lightly. And this is why the enemy has his way with people. This is why people leave the churches that they're in. This is why people, this is why people don't answer their calling from God. This is why people don't even know their gifts. It's because they're not in the word like they're supposed to. They're, they're, they're not in the word at all like they're supposed to. Because if, if they would, they, the, the enemy wouldn't be running them away. The enemy wouldn't be having his way with them. See, God wants you to know exactly like it is because time is, time is short. And if you're not in his word enough, then things are not going to work for you. And, I mean, that's his word because we reap what we sow. And, and, we, and if you're not in his word, whatever you're sowing, it's going to show. We know them by, by, by their fruits. If you're in his word like you're supposed to, it's going to show. The enemy's not going to have his way with you. You're going to be shining. You're going to be operating in your gift. You're going to, you're going to be expanding the kingdom of God. You're going to be casting out demons. You're going to be healing the sick. You're going, to be, you're going to help people to know Jesus because that's what his word tells us to do. And if you're not doing that, no wonder you're going through what you're going through. Because you're not in the word like you're supposed to be. You're not studying it. You're probably not even going to church, some people. Which is where we get the word. Which is, which is where we get fed the word. You know, it, it all comes down to the word. If, you, if it's not in you like it's supposed to be, then you're not going to be able to stand against the enemy like God wants you to stand. And you're going to miss out on what God has for you. See, God gave it. See, the word of God is a love letter from God. And it's all based on love. And, and God gave it to us because he wants us to have everything that he has for that he wants to give us. And it's, it's all mind-blowing. It's miracles. It's blessings for us and for, and for us to help others to give. But you have to be in his word like you're supposed to be in his word in order to, to receive it. In order for it to manifest in your life, in your life, because God's love is mind blowing for us. But you won't even know that if you're not in the Word like you're supposed to. You'll take that too lightly. God's love blows our mind. It's unconditional, and He means that. He loves us no matter what we do. But you have to be in His Word to really grab a hold of that and understand that. I mean, He He even has the enemy helping us. If you're in the Word like you're supposed to, you'll know that. See, the enemy's not no mistake. God created the enemy. God didn't make any mistakes when he created. God is all-knowing. God, God knows the end from the, from the beginning. The enemy's part of God's plan. He can't hurt you unless you allow him to. But you won't know that if you're not in the Word like you're supposed to be. The enemy's helping us to walk in our blessing. The, the, the enemy is helping us to, uh, to receive miracles. See, because pain is the pathway of blessing. 
God lets us know in his word. And if you're in the word, are you supposed to? You'll know that. Pain is the pathway to blessing. No pain, no gain. I mean, that, that's the word. It takes pain to expand our knowledge in God. It pain identifies us with Christ. God uses pain, pain and suffering so we can know what's in our heart. Pain is the only thing that stabilizes us. Pain is the only thing that Pain allows God, pain gives us trust with God. If we can't handle our pain and our suffering, then God can't trust us with power. So my advice to, to everybody for this new year is be in the word of God as much as possible. Because it's up to us. God's not going to do everything for us. He gave us everything that we need already. It's up to us to get in his word, study it, learn it, grab a hold of it, and even meditate on it. He tells us to meditate on it. That's because it cannot be stopped. So for this new year, get in his word as much as possible and apply it to your life and your mind will be blown. You'll never be the same. You'll see miracles. You'll see blessings. You'll grab a hold of God's love for us. His mind-blowing love. His unconditional love. You'll, un you'll understand the things that you never thought you would understand. And it will blow your mind. But you have to be in the Word of God for that to happen. Amen. Happy New Year to you. Amen. Well, let's give God a praise again for Deacon Dominic Hunter. What another powerful message that the Lord has given to us tonight. And I, I, I use the name Deacon uh, Dominic Hunter again. He is one of our deacons in the church. But as you can hear and see clearly, he is also a preacher. And uh, he is involved in our leadership uh, ministry, our preaching ministry. He's being trained uh, in that particular class. So you'll be seeing him uh, transition from the deacon's ministry into the pulpit ministry, which you just uh, received here uh, just a few moments ago. But again, so many nuggets, so many uh, great points uh, that he delivered tonight. And again, you want to tuck those in your heart and let that word marinate on the inside of you so that you can be empowered to go to the next level. Amen. Well, I don't want to belabor the moment or the time any longer. We've got another preacher that's going to come right now and deliver the word of the Lord to you. I hope you're writing some of this down, or at least uh, you can go back and listen to the, uh, the video again sometime later in the week and continue to meditate on what the Spirit of God is saying. Well, now we're going to have Minister Roshana Carter, who is going to come and share with us what the Spirit of God has given to her to encourage us for the year 2020. Uh, she has been a faithful member of this church as well for several years. She wears uh, several different hats. Uh, what she's doing now is heading up our human resource ministry. Uh, she's been on our finance team, has worked in many different areas within the ministry. So we're so happy to have her come tonight to deposit what God has placed in her heart and in her spirit. So let's give God praise as Minister Roshana Carter comes to share the word of the living God. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, he is. God is so good. God is so good when he, when he brings his word to his people. His word is sweet. 
His word is wonderful. His word lifts us up. And he, it encourages us to know that God is on our side. When the Lord dealt with me, I was asking the Lord through the month of December, what is it that you are speaking in the year 2021? And I kept asking the Lord here and there throughout the year, throughout the, the month of December of what it is that you were speaking in the year 2021, Lord. What is your word for, the, for that year? And the Lord has given to me two days after Christmas when I read in Romans 15, and if you can come turn to me the Romans 15 verses 1 through 7. In his word verse 1 it says, "We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproach of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded, one toward another, according to Christ Jesus. Verse 6, it says that ye may with one mind and with one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word that the Lord given to me when, he, when I asked him, what is it that you want to speak in the year 2021? And when he gave it to me two days after Christmas, he said, it is a time to heal. All right. He said, it is time to heal in the year 2021. 2020 it brought us so much yes. it has brought us so much things into this life so much things that God that we have dealt with in this life in the year 2020 we have seen turmoil we have seen trouble we have seen loss we have seen pain we have seen hurt we have seen hate we have seen discord we have seen opposition we have seen people in hopeless situations. We have seen people lose jobs, homes, different things that they have lost in this, in this lifetime in 2020. And the Lord wants us to know in the year 2021 that it is time for us to heal. It is time for us to come together as one. It is time for us to come together in one mind and one accord. The word heal means to make healthy and whole or sound, to restore what has been lost to health, to bring back, free from ailments, to bring to an end or conclusion as conflicts between people or groups, usually with the strong implications of restoring former amenities, goodwill, and friendship. It is time to reconcile. It is time to come together as one and lift one another up. It is time to heal the brokenhearted, it is time to give back the people who have lost that hopelessness, to bring back hope to the people that are hopeless. Verse one through, uh, verses 1 and 2, when it talks about how that we are, that are strong are to lift up the weak. We are to feel, be filled with care and concerns for others. It is not about us. To support the weak with our strength to use your strength to serve one another, to revive one's hope and faith, to build up and bring back. It is time to bring back life into the people that has lost hope. It is time to think of our, if not of ourselves, but think of others. It is not time to be selfish. It is not time to think of ourselves, but to think of others, the people that we need to help. Strengthen one another and rebuild back what has been broken, mm. tore down and destroyed, to bring back trust, to bring back hope and love and faith. Believing God has not forsaken us and a time to forgive. So much hurt has been out there with a lot of people, with a lot of hate, a lot of racism, a lot of things that is out there, and it's time to heal our nation. Verse 6, when it talks about how 
we are to be in one, in one mind and in, in the same mind and, and speak the same words. It is time to come together as a unit, come together and speak the same things. It is time for us to come together as one and to be able to build up one another in strength. The ones that are strong, let's lift up the weak. The ones that need us to lift them up from the miry clouds of, of clay. The ones that are down and out. It is time for us to be that strength. It is time for us to stand in the gap. It is time for us to be one in unity as one. The body of Christ must come together as one. It is time to heal the nation. It is time to heal the broken. It is time to heal. It is time to heal and restore and to bring back what was lost. For truly so many people were hurt in this year. So many people has hurt, lost family. So many people has lost friends and loved ones. So many people has lost things. But it's time to restore back and to build back and to bring back the hope that God has given to us that we can move on, that we can keep going, that we can move forward, that we can continue to move on. God is an awesome God. Yes. No matter what it looks like, no matter what you're going through, no matter what we've been through in this year, God is an awesome God. And he is a God of promise. He is a God that does not go back on his word. His word does not return void. His word is going forth. And no matter what he has spoken to you down through the years, it is still coming to pass. God is wanting us to heal and to be able to build and restore and bring back the hope in God's people's lives. I want you to be encouraged tonight to know that tomorrow may not be promised to us, but today we can have that hope and believe that God is able and God can do what he says he can do. Happy New Year and carry on the word in your lives. Amen. Amen. God is so good. My God, aren't these blessings coming into your life through these messages? I'm telling you, they are really lifting me up and I'm sure that they are doing the same for you. We thank God for Minister Roshana Carter with another powerful message that the Lord is releasing in this atmosphere tonight. I'm telling you, these messages are so good. They're so uh, timely for the time that we are living in right now. We need these kind of messages again to continue to strengthen us, to propel us into our destinies like never before. Well, we're not finished. Uh, receiving word from leaders here in this church. We've got another preacher, another woman of God that is going to come and share the word of life with you. Uh, she is one of our associate ministers as well. Uh, she's a pastor in her own right, has been ordained and that sort of thing, has served in this church uh, for the last two or three years. She's a faithful servant unto the Lord and uh, we're so happy to have her come as well. Uh, she is the leader of our women's uh, ministry, along with Minister Pamela Gordon. Yes, yes. And uh, as many of you know, uh, she has uh, held the, the, the reins over that ministry in such a wonderful way since she has had that responsibility. And we're excited to have her come uh, to share with us what the Lord has placed upon her heart as well. My, my brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you about Pastor Lillian Montez. Yeah. She is going to come now to give us what the Lord has given to her to empower us to go to the next level. Minister and Pastor Lillian, come now and share the word of life. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Ha, huh. happy new year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, tonight, I actually... Um, ponder, meditate it, and you know, God's got to go and have his way, yes, yes. no matter what. No matter uh, what. I thought about one other message, is the pastor's been preaching on the mind, uh, on renewing our mind, but actually the Lord, being the Lord, he actually changed that message, and today he actually has a word of encouragement for all of us. Uh, that word is to press on. 
Press on. Press on. Yeah. Actually, God wants us to press on. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever happened in the past is gone. And he wants us to press on. Yeah. I am actually going to read. I'm using Philippians 3, 12, chapter 3, 12 and 14. And let me just read it and then I'm going to continue. It says, not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold on that for which I also was laid hold by, Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, I forget what lies behind and I'm reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize and the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And there is no doubt like Minister Roshana was talking about that we, when we come, we have come to the last day of the year. What a privilege. And I just want to thank our senior pastor and uh, all of my brothers and sisters, the minister, it is a privilege to end this year when everybody is anywhere on earth. But guess what? Here we are preaching the word of the Lord. And, uh, and that is a special privilege. Uh, and as I was reflecting of it and all of the events that took everybody by storm. Because you know what? We started last January and then suddenly we went to March. Uh, February and then March and then the storm just hit it was a storm it came up just like that yeah, yeah. especially COVID-19 and all of the effects in our lives and others and tonight the word that the Lord has for all of us is a word of encouragement yeah. and what he's saying is we need to press on yeah, okay yeah. we're going to press on okay what happened, like I said, it happened. And now it's time to that the Lord is saying, people, we need to press on. We're going to press on to the storm. Yeah. We're going to press on to illnesses. Yeah. Because you know what? This is not over. And so whatever happened in the past, it was tough. But right now, we're going to press on. And we're going to press on to everything. We're going to press on to whatever whatever God allow, because yes. like my brother said, Romans 8, 28, everything is going to work out. Yes. Hallelujah. Everything is going to work out. We're going to continue, move forward with God, because the mighty, awesome God we serve can and will handle anything yes. that comes our way. Yes. If you read the Bible, he has not lost. He is victorious. Yes. Our God is telling us tonight, Press on. Yes. With God in our side, we're not going to fail. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I have to tell you that our, base, our verses today from the Apostle Paul, he actually is pictured in the Christian life. And so he's describing the things because if somebody actually has to press on, he knows what he's writing about is Paul because he suffered a lot. And so based on that, he's giving us uh, a it's, it's not a full sermon, but I'm just going to share the little principles because he wants us to grow up. So pressing on is that we have to press on to grow up because we cannot stay stagnant. We have to press on. And that's the only way that we're going to grow up. And sometimes, you know what? We think we got it all together, all planned. And like I said, COVID came, the storm came. And now this year, we don't know what the future holds. But guess what? God is God, and God is the God of the future, and God knows what's going to be happening next year. So again, he wants us to press on. So Paul is sharing with us principles because the only way, like I said, to press on is for us to grow spiritually. So he's sharing with us the principles so that we're able to Press on because there's a well, there's a uh, there's a race to win. That's what he's comparing in this uh, chapter. He's comparing the Christian race to a run. To but but the runners they need to what press on, and the runners are actually running to where to win a prize. And we Christians 
need to be already thinking that we have to get into that race yeah. to win, but we have to understand what is the race about? Yeah. Where is this race happening? What is happening in our life, in all of our lives? And so he wants us to press on so that we could win the race, the, uh, the race because whatever we're going to do this year, we already won the race, but it's yeah. just that we got to get into the race and we got to go with the mentality that we're not losers. God don't lose and we're not losers. Hallelujah. So yeah. he want us to press on. And uh, the first thing that, uh, the, the first principle is to, to press on, we're going to have to be humble. We're going to have to humble ourselves. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because what it is, is that we have a call of personality and half of the people I'm saying, you could say many times I'm humble, humble, but to humble yourself, you have to listen to God and not only listen to God, but like Paul say, that it's not that I have laid hold of everything. He's saying in here, I don't know at all, you guys, but then he remained teachable. So we have to remain teachable and that it is a process. So not only remain, remaining uh teachable, which means that I am going to listen, that I am going to, like we're sharing in here tonight, all of us are coming. I mean, uh, there's nothing eloquent, I don't think, in me. The only eloquency in me is because Christ lives in me. And so we have to remain teachable and that we are all in a process. This is not over. And so we cannot start thinking that, oh, I just i um, somewhere more anointed. No, we're actually not. We do have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Lord gave us the power so that we could preach, so that we could help, so that we could go out there and help people because there's a lot of people right now. I mean, I'm like a fan. I have to say it. I'm not just giving an advertising, but I am Mrs. Walmart. <laughs> and so whenever I go to Walmart, you better be sure that I'm washing I'm a very, I like to watch, I like to watch reactions, and I actually seen people not being able to pay uh, the whole groceries, and sometimes, and I'm not saying this because I'm, I just want to just boast myself, I'm boasting in the Lord, that the Lord has given me a retired widow, he's given me the means to actually retire, and even to help others that are in need, yeah. hallelujah. The second thing is that we have to have commitment. Oh, good Lord. It's like we have, uh, we have a church and we have Christians and everything that had happened and all of that, but we still don't have the commitment. God is saying, for you to press on, you got to get deep with me. You got to get deep in your commitment. You got to get deep in the ministry that you're serving. You got to get deep with each other. You're going to help, like my sister said, you need to lift each other up. And so, and that's what's missing, the commitment. Deeper commitment is what the Lord is saying tonight. He says, me, he said, I want you to be committed. If you're saying that you're for me, well, you have to show that you're for me. Hallelujah. And so we cannot walk anymore in this little uh, whatever walk. Like today I feel this way. Tomorrow I feel that way. So it's not even about coming to church, guys. It's actually have a deeper commitment with Christ so that he could help us lift other uh, up. And that he could help us to press on. A deeper commitment. We have to remain faithful. God is faithful. Hallelujah. That is who he is. He says, I am a faithful God. I will bless you when you bless others. Yeah. And so yeah. to press on, we have to become a faithful believer. And another thing that we have to do is that we will not get quick when things happen to press the panic <clears throat> button. Because you see people, I mean, things happen, and then suddenly everybody wants to just kind of like the anxiety is just really high sky. Everything is going on out there is just kind of like getting people to become panic. So the Lord is saying, instead of the panic button, press the press on button. Just push through. Just go through. Yeah. Just go. I mean, we fall down, but we get up. But we have to continue to press on. Hallelujah. So instead of just saying, okay, what do I do? What do I do? Get panic and all that stuff. No. God is saying, call on me and I will answer you. Yeah. Press on, he's saying. 
Press on. Press on when you don't feel like. Press on to church. Press on to, to help others. Press on to pray. Glory. Hallelujah. That's another thing. We have to press on. So when there is an opportunity, which is right now, because you know what? I'm not, I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen tomorrow about the Antichrist and all of that. Nobody knows when the Lord is coming back. But one thing it is, while we have time and we have a time to pray that has been open for all of us, we have to press on. We will press on to the house of God because we all need prayer. We all need that prayer, guys. I mean, I cannot live without prayer. A Christian without prayer is like a Christian without air. So this is the time to press on to the house of God, to unite with others, others believers, because in the unity is the strength. Hallelujah. So we have to press on, and we have an enemy that don't like unity. He likes disunity. But God is saying tonight, press on and press to the house of God. The third thing is that we forget the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgetting the past. We have to forget the past. Like Paul says in here, I forget what, what lies behind. Uh, the past means lying behind. It's back there. It's gone. It's done. Let it go. God is saying, let it go. Don't, don't, don't dwell in the past. Move forward. Move forward. Hallelujah. He's saying to press on. To press on. Forget the past. Yet move forward. Hallelujah. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. The Lord is saying, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. He's saying so that you could move forward. You know what? If you do not let it go, will never be able to move forward. Uh-uh. No, will not. That's what happened to the Israelites. The Israelites, after five, four hundred years of slavery, God used the prophet Moses to deliver them, and then they went onto the promised land. But guess what happened? They could not forget Egypt, the onions, the smells, the whatever. I mean, and it's pretty much like us. Sometimes God is saying, look, I have something better in front of you. Look at it. But let it go. We have to let go of the past so that we're able to move forward. Another thing is that we need to be willing to sacrifice. Guess what? We need to be willing to sacrifice. Yeah. It's like, trust me, like my brother said, no pain, no gain. We have to be willing to sacrifice. What are the, the, the sacrifices that God is asking? He's just saying, leave your carnal desires as the Holy Ghost. When we accepted the Lord, the Holy Ghost came and dwelt in us. And he is the dunamis of God. He is the power. If, if, we're, if we're failing, he helps us. It's not that I am perfect and I'm not saying that anybody's going to be perfect. But actually, the Bible says, be holy as I am mean, holy. So the Holy Spirit will help us to do the things that God wants us to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. So they're willing to sacrifice for what? What is the sacrifice? We, we need to actually sacrifice. It's going to cost. What do you want? Hallelujah. It's not that we want it. It's that God will give it to us because he's a good God. Yeah. He says, I love to give you gift. I love to. I'm delighting in my children to give you, to lift you up, to bless you, to all of that. But we have to go higher. To move higher, we're going to have to will to sacrifice. We have to be willing to sacrifice to sacrifice those things that have not been placing on 2020 to the Lord. On 2021, we all have to make a commitment and say, what is it, Lord, that, I, that is not pleasing to you? Because that's the only, way, the only way that we're going to go higher, through prayer, to, to just be with our brothers and sisters, to, to, to work hard, God. You know, I mean, we work hard in the world. I did work hard in the world, and that's what I'm retired. But I want something working hard for the world. Well, now I'm retired, so my whole life is dedicated to the Lord. So help me, God. So I'm not saying that today and then tomorrow. You don't see me anymore. But so far, he wants us to be willing to sacrifice uh -huh. things that are displeasing to him, that, that are attitude. It could just be an attitude. It could just be anything that we're not really loving each other. He says, love one another. God is love. And so he's commanding us to love one another. Listen. 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 Time is running out. Okay? Yes. And time actually ran out. 
for many people in 2020. It's sad. It's the truth. And I'm going to tell you, I will encourage you, and I will say, these are not the times to play around with God. No, no, no. These are not the times to just say, I'm here, and, 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 and whatever it is that you think is driving you to, to go to church. This is it. This is the time that God is actually asking all of us, uh, choose you today who you're going to serve. If you're going to serve here, then go here. And if you're going to serve me, it's going to have to be 100% of the time. Mm. Hallelujah. It's time to stop playing being a Christian. He's saying to us, yes, press on, but press on to a better life. Press on to the better anointing. Press on to be a better human being. Press on to help others. Press on to just touch the ones that nobody wants to touch. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody, and there's, and there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, this is a blessing. Hallelujah. That we are seen and that we're able to communicate in these times yet. Because we don't know what tomorrow might bring. But these are the day. I believe that the days are coming, says the Lord, that we will be judged by him. We will. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying, you know, and, and let me tell you before I end, I know, time is running. Before I end, many people are saying, oh, the Lord is coming because all of this is happening. But listen to me, huh? We are my 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 meeting the Lord could happen today because tomorrow is not guaranteed. Not even this second. I mean, I could just be here and I mean, I don't know. So this is what the Lord is saying: Choose you today, who you're gonna serve. And if you're gonna serve the world, go for the world. If you're gonna serve me, go with passion. Just press on. Press on actually means go. Go with passion. Go with everything you got. Give it everything you got. If you're gonna do me up, me, me a mediocrity, then God is saying, I'll help you, but you have to choose because time is running. Time is moving fast. And God, my brothers and sisters, thank you for listening. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Press on. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Bless you. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yes. Amen. Wasn't that an amazing message as well? Yes. Press on. Press on. That is certainly uh, a word from the Lord that we need to take into uh, the new year and into the new season that God is giving to us. Uh, well, it looks like we have about, or oh, about 25 minutes or so before the clock strikes 12. Uh, so I want to take the next 25 minutes or so uh, to share with you some of the things that God has placed upon my heart uh, to share with all of us uh, here tonight. So I'm going to ask you to turn with me in your Bibles uh, to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Uh, it's a familiar portion of scripture. I don't have the time to read the entire uh, passage of scripture, but I do want to encourage you to go back and listen to it in your leisure. But I do want to read to you uh, verses 1 through verse 11. And then uh, we'll look at verse 16 through verse 19. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30. I do want to encourage all of you to join us again tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. I'm going to have uh, Brother Ryan Dotson with me again, and we're going to be sharing some more concepts with you uh, to help you to uh, really have a great 2021. So again, we'll be coming back tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for all of you uh, to receive more ministry. And then uh, we'll be back, of course, on Sunday to give you more of the message that the Lord is giving to us tonight. Now, I do want to say I'm not going to be able to finish the message tonight, but I am going to give you enough of it to encourage your hearts uh, so that you can uh, have some uh, understanding of what the Lord is saying to you uh, for the year 2021. For those of you that are connected to this ministry, those of you that are members of this church, and those of you that are 
a part of the Living Waters International family, I am here to decree and to announce unto you that the year 21, 2021 is our year of recovery. I, I want you to hear that. The year 2021, for those of you that are connected to this house, is our year of recovery. And we're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 30, and I'll read to you verse 1 through verse 11. It says, And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinium the Jezreelitess and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued. He and 400 men, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread. And he did eat and they made him drink water. Now the other portion of scripture I want you to read in your leisure uh, certainly I want you to read the entire chapter, but I was going to read verse 16 through 19 as well, but I, I'm running out of time. So I want you to read verse 16 through verse 19 as well uh, later tonight or perhaps uh, sometime in the morning. But I want to get to uh, enough of this message as I possibly can. Again, our theme for the year 2021 is our year of recovery. That God is going to restore the things that you have lost. The things that the devil have come into your life and stolen from you. And I said stolen. He took it from you. He took it from you. He, he, he pulled it out of your hands. He took it out of your life. Things that got away from you. Opportunities that you should have had. Relationships. That, that you should have experienced things that the devil has come into your life. Even in this year 2020, God is going to restore those things back to you in the year 2021 and moving forward. As we look at this particular passage of scripture, it is easy to see that when the Amalekites came into the city of Ziklag, that they came into the, into the city of Ziklag and stole the wives and the children of David and his men. When they came into the city and stole the wives and their children, they caught David and his men by surprise. They were not expecting this attack. 
David was off at another location along with his men. And on their way back to Ziklag, they smelled smoke. Mm -hmm. they, they realized that the city was on fire. And as they got closer to the premise, and as they began to observe the environment of Ziklag, they realized that their wives and their children had been abducted. They were totally shocked. They were totally caught unaware. Just like this COVID-19. COVID-19 caught us all by surprise. And as many prophets we have in the body of Christ. As many prophets, as many men and women of God that have been called to the prophetic ministry. None of them were able to prophesy that COVID-19 was coming in the year 2020. As, as much as we seek the Lord, as much as we cry out to him, nobody was able to foresee that our 2020 was going to look like this. It's, it's, it's like the Amalekites that had come into the city of Ziklag and rocked our world. It's, it's like COVID-19 caught us all by surprise. We had no preparation. We, we had no idea that this was going to happen. And, and even though we had prophesied many wonderful things that were going to happen in the year 2020, we still had no inclination at all as to what was going to happen in the year 2020 when COVID-19 showed up. But I'm here to tell you that even though COVID-19 caught us by surprise like the Amalekites did to David and his men. God still has a plan to prosper his people. God still has a plan to bless you beyond imagination. God still has a plan to lift up his church. To rearrange certain situations and circumstances in our lives for his glory. That even though COVID-19 caught us by surprise, it did not catch God by surprise. Because he knows all things. He sees all things. He hears all things. And he will certainly judge all things. But I'm here tonight to tell you emphatically that the year 2021 will be a time where God begins to bring back into your life the very things that the devil stole and took out of your life by surprise. Oh, you've got to hear me tonight. I want you to hear me tonight that God strategically is going to bring things back into your life that the devil took into his camp. Things that you have cried about, things that you have, have walked the floors late at night about, things that you, that you have, have been devastated over. God is going to little by little begin to bring a spirit of restoration over your life in this season. The Amalekites did not play fair. The Amalekites, they, they, they were the type of people that, that would hit you in places where it hurts. And, and if we would be honest, we have been hit in places where it hurts. We have been hit in the most delicate places. The reason I suggest that to you is because the Amalekites took the wives of David and his men, took their children, took their most valuable possession, if you will. They didn't just take a car or a house. They abducted their wives. The most precious commodity that they had in their lives. The most valuable relationships the Amalekites came in and took from them. And this is what has happened to many of us in the year 20. 20. But God in the year 2021 is going to turn it around. He's going to flip the script. What you, you've been used to hearing bad news. And now you're going to start hearing some good news in the year 2021. But David and his men were caught unaware. 
And when David and his men got to the scene where the wives and the children had been taken, they were so devastated by the act that David and his men began to weep. They began to cry. They were devastated. They were shocked beyond imagination. They, they, they felt like their lives had come to an end. And they had become so devastated and they had become so uh, bewildered in this situation. They had been taken by surprise to the point to where they, they just could not understand how this had happened. And one of the things that they began to do, and this is what the Lord told me to tell you, if you are really going to see recovery come into your life, if you're really going to experience restoration, one of the things that he wants me to tell you tonight is that you've got to stop playing the blame game. If you notice in the text, after David and his man began to weep, over the loss of their wives and their children. In the midst of all of the weeping and the devastation. They then began to do what many of us do. When things do not go the way that we plan. They began to play the blame game. They started pointing the finger at their leader. They started pointing their finger at David. And they in essence said David this is your fault. But I want you to hear me tonight. It wasn't David's fault. Because David's wives and children were stolen too. It, it wasn't like David was, was on vacation somewhere having a great time and set them up. David experienced loss as well. But when pain hits you, you've got to be careful to not start pointing fingers at those who are around you and claiming that it's their fault for why you are experiencing what you are experiencing. God told me to tell you, stop playing the blame game. Stop blaming other people for where you are in life. Stop blaming other people for the mistakes that you have made. Stop blaming other people for things that didn't work out the way that you wanted them to. God knows how to give you another chance. God knows how to set the record straight. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning. But you've got to stop playing the blame game. You've got to stop blaming people for your attitude. You've got to stop blaming people for the things that didn't work. You've got to stop blaming people for the things that you did wrong. You've got to stop blaming people for the mess that you created. You've got to stop blaming people for the trouble that you stirred up. You've got to understand that in order for you to make it to the next level, in order for you to experience what God has for you in the year 2021, you've got to assume responsibility for your own life. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. You've got to assume responsibility for your own life. If you messed it up, you've got to assume responsibility. If, if you were the cause for the thing breaking down, you've got to assume responsibility. If you are the reason for why this situation has occurred in your life and you keep going around the same mountain over and over and over again, you've got to say this is my fault and it is my responsibility to get myself together. Oh, you've got to hear me. I know this is a little tough tonight, but you've got to expect a different year. And the only reason that you can expect a different year and the only way that you can have a better year is you've got to take responsibility for what you messed up in the year 2020 and what you messed up in the year 2019 because you have sabotaged your own success. Oh, you got to hear me. You've got to stop sabotaging your destiny. You've got to stop sabotaging what God wants to do in your life. You've got to stop being your own enemy. And you've got to stop pointing the finger at other people. You've got to pull your own bootstraps up. You've got to pull yourself together. You've got to say it's me. 
It's me. I'm the reason. I'm the, I'm the reason why this didn't work. I'm the reason why this isn't going the right way. They started pointing, pointing fingers at David. Because when you start pointing fingers, you will leave your life stagnant. You cannot go forward. You will leave yourself incapacitated to elevate and to go to the next level. You've got to realize that everybody's been hurt. Everybody's had a hard time. You got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You got to stop making excuses. You got to accept what is there before you and decide in this new season, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to change my attitude. I'm going to change my spirit. I'm going to change my behavior. And I'm not going to blame the church. I'm not going to blame the pastor. I'm not going to blame my husband. I'm not going to blame my wife. I'm not going to blame the children. I'm not going to blame my friends. I'm not going to blame the white man or the yellow man or the red woman. I'm going to accept responsibility for my own life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next thing I want you to understand if you're going to into, enter into a great season of recovery is you've got to learn how to preach to yourself. Oh yes, I said it. You've got to learn how to preach to yourself. And I know, I know everybody has not been called to be an apostle. I know everybody has not been called to be a prophet. And not everyone has been called to be an evangelist and a pastor and a teacher. But you're still called to preach. And the first person you need to start preaching to is not your neighbor. It is not the woman in your neighborhood. You've got to learn how to preach to yourself. Why am I telling you this? Because when David and his men were filled with despair, they started pointing the finger at David. They said, David, you are the reason why this has happened. But the Bible says that David himself became greatly distressed. David was discouraged for a little while. And the way he worked himself out of it is David began to speak to himself. David began to preach into his own spirit and into his own life. Let me tell you something. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And there are too many of you that you have cursed your own destiny by the words that come out of your mouth. You have cursed your own life because you keep speaking death over you. When you get in a tight place, when you get in a real dismal environment when you start feeling discouraged you've got to learn how to muster up ministry out of your own spirit you've got to learn how to minister to yourself oh god there is no nobody that can come into a greater season of recovery if you don't learn how to preach to yourself if you don't learn how to speak life into your own life if you don't learn how to build yourself up praying in the Holy Ghost. If you don't learn how to encourage yourself and motivate yourself and talk yourself into success. Yes. David encouraged himself in the Lord, yes. his God. You've got to start telling yourself, we've come too far to leave now. We've come too far to die now. We've come too far to give up now. we come too far to give up. God is getting ready to do a new thing. God is getting ready to pour out blessings that we've never seen. I refuse to die tonight. I refuse to go through hell and high water and get to the edge of my blessing and die. Oh, you got to hear me tonight. You got to learn how to talk to yourself. You got to tell yourself, I am the head and not the tail. I am healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I will not die before my time is up. You got to speak it by faith. You got to decree it. You got to declare it. You got to speak it out of your belly and out of your spirit. Because when you speak it, you give life to it. If you speak it, it'll come into manifestation. But you've got to know what you're saying. And you've got to learn how to encourage yourself. I'm talking about when you can't get a hold of the preacher. 
you got to learn how to preach to yourself. When you can't get to the church, you got to learn how to draw ministry out of your own heart. You've got to learn how to draw from those Bible studies that you were sitting in 10 years ago. You've got to learn how to draw word out of your own spirit when you find yourself in an isolated place. Because when you find yourself alone and isolated, you need to let the devil know he's still in trouble. Because you've got ministry in your own heart. You've got ministry in your own spirit and you know how to pull it out of you at the right time to keep you going forward. And I know that there are many of you that are discouraged and that's why you've got to preach encouragement. You've got to speak life into your being. You've got to learn how to lay hands on your own head. You've got to learn how to prophesy over your own life. There are so many out here prophet lying. You've got to learn how to prophesy over your own life and over your own destiny and over your own purpose. There is nobody that can preach to me better than I can. You've got to learn the art of self-ministry, personal ministry, allowing the words of faith to come out of your own heart. You've got to learn how to build yourself up in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ so that when the enemy starts coming in like a flood, you can start regurgitating the word out of your heart and out of your spirit because it's God's word that's going to lead you beside the still waters. It's God's word that is going to bring you into the greater place that he's calling you to. It's God's word that's going to take you from faith to faith and from glory to glory. But you've got to speak it out of your mouth. Yes. And David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible continues in this story that after David encouraged himself he went before God and asked the Lord shall we pursue? David did not move out in the heat of his own spirit. He had enough wisdom to know that I cannot get the victory if God doesn't give it to me. He, he's not an independent man. He is dependent upon the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't get the victory in this new season without God. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how intellectual you are. I don't care what university you graduated from. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care what seminary school you graduated from. None of that has anything to do with what God is about to do in your life. And in this new season, you've got to learn how to depend on the Holy Ghost in getting a word from God that is going to lead and guide your life. David received the word from God that he was going to recover. And that's why you can have the confidence. And that's why you can be assured. And that's why you can walk by faith. Because you have heard from God. David did not just go out after the Amalekites by his own strength. He got a word from God. And he started moving forward. And the Bible says that David took 600 of his men and they started walking toward the recovery. But on their way to walking toward their place of recovery, 200 of the men fell off. 200 of the men fell off. I know it's almost midnight, but I'm not working on a clock tonight. I'm not going to keep you much longer, but I want to tell you this. 200 of the men fell off. So that left David with 400. And the Lord told me to tell you that you've got to work with what you've got. You, you didn't hear what I said. You've got to work with what you've got. 200 of the men could not finish the journey. But David continued on with the 400. You've got to learn how to work with what you've got. Because if you work with what you've got, God's going to anoint it. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. God's going to anoint with what's in your hands. I don't care if it's 400. If you give it to God, he's going to use it. He's going to bless it. He's going to stretch it. 
And some of you are discouraged because you, you're looking at a little. You're looking at small things in your life. But God is saying, I want you to use what's in your house. I want you to use what's in your hands. I want you to use what you have left. Because when you use what you have left, you're going to see the favor of God resting upon it. And you're going to be shocked at the blessing that is going to come into your life. Some of you are looking at something small. You're looking at small ministries. You're looking at small resources. You're looking at small opportunities. And some of you, by mistake, you're looking at yourself as a small person. But the Spirit of God is saying, take what you have. Stop looking at the excess that you dream and imagine about. God says, use what you have and put it to work. And use what you've got. And God's going to step in the midst of it. And it's going to produce fruit. I'm talking about a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over blessing. But you've got to use what you've got. And you've got to stop whining about who didn't finish the journey. You've got to stop crying about who, who left you and who walked away from you and, and who didn't believe in you. God said, use what you've got. Oh, I need to tell somebody this. Some of you, you lost half of your church. God said, take the 20 and go into your promise. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Some of you lost friends. God said, take the two friends you have. Because as you keep moving forward, I'm going to multiply you. Some of you, you lost money. God said you lost half of your half of your finances. You lost your job. You lost your income. God said, take what you have left. You've got 600 in your savings. God said, use that. And I'm going to take it and bless it and use it in a supernatural way like you've never seen. You've got to understand that God doesn't need much to do something great with it. God doesn't need a whole lot. All he needs is your faith. God, that Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. It, you, you just take whatever you have at your disposal. And David worked the 400. Listen to me. He recovered it all with less. Listen to me, listen to me. You know you're anointed when you can do much with less. You know God is with you when you have little in your hands and you can do supernatural things. You know you can turn a world upside down and that God is with you when you take 12 disciples. When you take two fish. And five loaves of bread. When you can take just, just a little in your hands. And stretch it before God. And let him put his blessing on it. I'm here to tell you. You are going to recover all. With what you already have. You're going to see the increase of God. Come into your life. With what's already at your disposal. David did not whine about the 200 that didn't finish the trip. And some of you have experienced casualties in this season because we're in high level spiritual warfare and some people will not make it and some people will get tired and some people will get worn out and some people will just quit and some people will throw in the towel and some people will give up on God and some people will leave the church and some people will walk away from you because they walked away from Jesus but it does not stop the mission and the prophecy that God has over over your life. It will not stop the vision that God has for your life if you take what you have left. Oh, who am I preaching to tonight? You got to take what's in your hands. And David took the 400 and they started moving. And on their journey, right there in the middle of the text, the Bible says that David and his men, they ran into an Egyptian. And this Egyptian just all of a sudden, he just comes here in the middle of this text, just seemingly out of nowhere. 
This Egyptian is there. And all of a sudden this Egyptian has the clue to where David's enemies are. He, he knows where the Amalekites are because he had been in the camp of David's enemies. And this Egyptian knew exactly where to point David to the enemies. What I'm trying to tell you in this season, God is going to send you some help. Oh, Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. God is going to send you some help. God is going to send you some help to make the trip a little bit easier. He's going to send you some real help to help you to make the trip and the journey shorter. He's going to send you some help. He's going to send you an Aaron and a her to uphold your hands. He's going to send you some help. He's going to send you some people to pray for you and to intercede for you. He's going to send you some people that will guide you in the right place. He's going to send you some help. He's going to take the burden off of you. He's going to send you some help from a strange place. From a place you didn't imagine. From a place you did not expect. David had no idea that they would run into this Egyptian. And that the Egyptian had come out of the camp of the Amalekites. And yet there, were da there was David's answer. In the Egyptian. In a strange person. In a strange place. And God said, I'm going to send you help in this year 2021 from strange places. The reason that you're frustrated is because you keep looking to familiar sources to receive your blessing. And God is saying, I'm sending you surprises in this year. I'm sending you help from surprising places. I'm sending you support from people you don't even know. I'm sending you, oh God, you've got to hear me tonight. I'm going to cause somebody to fall in love with the anointing on your life. And they're going to help you. They're going to assist you. He's going to cause people to believe in what you're doing. He's going to cause people to believe in what you're doing. They're going to have compassion on you. They're going to have bowels of mercy towards you. And they're going to say, let's help that woman. Let's help that man. Let's help this church. Let's help this business. Let's help this family. God is sending somebody some help tonight. Oh, look at your neighbor in your house and tell them help is on the way. Oh, you're too quiet. You're too quiet. Tell them again, help is on the way. Tell everybody in the house, help is on the way. God is sending reinforcements. God is sending backup. God is sending more angels. God is sending more warring angels. God is sending archangels. God is sending help in the north. God is sending help from the south. God is sending help from the east. God is sending help from the west. And he's sending help that you've never seen before. He's sending help that you've never imagined before. He's sending help from strange places. Oh, I said strange places. Strange places from unfamiliar places. Unfamiliar resources are coming into your house. Somebody give him a praise in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody help is on the way. You ought to give God praise. It's after midnight. Welcome to 2021. Somebody holler, help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Give God a praise. You crossed over and tell the devil help is on the way. Help is on the way. You've been by yourself. You've been in a struggle. You've had famine in your life, but God is sending help. You've been in a dry place. You've been in a wilderness, but God is sending you help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your season of recovery, in your season of recovery, God is sending you help. God is sending you help. God is sending you help. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. God is sending you help. You've struggled long enough. You've been fighting long enough. You've been without long enough. God is sending you help. He's sending you help. He's sending you help. He's sending you help. And the Amalekites 
We're there drinking and partying and having a good time. Over the victory that they had won over David and his men. But then this Egyptian shows them where the Amalekites are. I'm almost finished. The Amalekites said they're over there. And David and his men began to strategize as to when they were going to launch their attack. See, you've got to get a strategy for where God is taking you. You can't just go after it. You've got to be strategic. You've got to plan it out. You've got to plan how you're going to get back what the devil stole. You've got to have a strategy to overcome your enemy. You can't just go at it like you used to. You've got to be strategic in your thinking. And God told me to tell you that as you strategize, the one thing that you've got to learn to do like you have never learned before is that you've got to learn how to fight. You didn't hear what I said. You've got to learn how to fight. The Bible said David and his men went into the camp of the Amalekites. And they caught them by surprise. And David and his men began to fight. The Bible said they fought until the wee wee hours in the morning. But David was a fighter. Oh, you better hear what I'm saying. If you're going to get the victory, you've got to know how to fight. I'm talking about fighting the good fight of faith. Because this recovery will not come easy. Your blessing will not come without a fight. And you've got to learn how to fight in the spirit. You've been fighting with your attitude and the devil has been getting the victory. You've been fighting in your flesh and you walked away empty handed. God said, I'm going to teach your hands to war. I'm going to teach you how to fight by the spirit of God. I'm going to show you how to overthrow devils and demons. Oh, you got to hear me tonight. I'm going to show you how to whip principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Because witches have your blessing. Warlocks have your blessing tied up. And God said, I'm going to show you how to go into the enemy's camp and take it back. But you've got to learn how to fight. You've got to fight for your joy. You've got to fight for a sound mind. You've got to fight for the anointing that's on your life. You've got to fight for the blessing that God has in store for you. You can't just sit back and expect God to do everything. You've got to learn how to fight. You've got to take the sword of the spirit and slay the giants that are trying to kill you. The church has been too passive. The church has been too casual. The church has been laid back for years. But the kingdom of heaven suffered violent. And the violent take it by force. If you don't take it, you won't get it. If you don't take it, it won't happen. If you don't fight the fight of faith, it will never happen. Oh, tell somebody in your house it's time to fight. 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 It's time to arm yourself, people of God. It's time to use what you know. It's time to stand up in battle. It's time to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It is time to duke it out with the enemy and let the devil know that if God be for us, then who can be against us? If we're going to see change, you've got to fight. You've got to fight. The church has got to fight. You've got to stop waiting for Jesus to come. And start fighting. Get down on your knees. And start fighting. Get down on your knees and pray and intercede like you've never done before. That is the only way that the body of Christ is going to come into harvest. Yes. That you've got to fight. David knew where the Amalekites were. But just because he knew where they were. Did not mean he didn't have to fight. To get back what they lost. He still had to fight. And you're going to have to fight. And you're going to have to believe God this time. And you're going to have to trust God. And you're going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. And you're going to have to start believing this word instead of just quoting things that you don't believe. You've got to fight. You've got to fight. You've got to cover yourself in the blood of Jesus. 
You've got to cover yourself in the armor of God. The thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And God is looking for a fighting church. Because if you fight by faith. You're going to be like David and his men. They began to recover all. They destroyed the Amalekites. In the verse 18, the Bible says, And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. What I'm trying to tell you as I bring this message to a close. Is David's wives were recovered. His children were recovered. And the wives and the children of his men, they were recovered because they fought to get it. They fought to receive it back into their hands. And I'm here tonight to tell you that it's all coming back to you. It's all coming back to you. Now, I know I'm not preaching to everybody, but I'm preaching to somebody you have been devastated. You have lost so much, you can't even talk about it. You have gone through so much. And God is saying in this year, 2021, you have cried and you have cried. And you have been heartbroken. And you have been discouraged. And you have been depressed. And you have almost been on the verge of suicide. And you've been down and you have been downtrodden in your heart and in your spirit. And you have felt like taking your own life. And God is saying, don't you do it because you're about to get it all back. Yes. You're about to get it all back. It's, it's about to come into your hands. It may not come the way you had it before, but it's going to come back in your hands. And it may come in a different form. And it may come in a different person. And it may come in a different way. But it's God's way of restoring unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust has eaten. What I'm trying to tell you is everything that escaped out of your hands, God by his spirit and by his power power is going to bring it back to you in this year in this season in this turnaround that he is bringing into the world and into the body of Christ and it's going to be a new thing there's going to be a shift there's going to be a changing of the guard there's going to be a rearranging of circumstances and situations and the last shall be first and the first shall be last and those that were borrowing are going to be lending and those that were underneath are going to be on top and those that were down are going to be up and those who were sad are going to be happy and those who were depressed are going to be rejoicing and those that didn't have enough are going to have more than enough and those that didn't know what to do are going to have answers and those who are lost are going to be found and those who are unsaved are going to be saved and those who are forgotten and overlooked and disenfranchised God said I'm giving it back to you I'm giving it back to you I'm giving your life back. I'm giving you your anointing back. I'm giving you your dream back. I'm giving you your power back. I'm giving you your identity back. I'm giving you the anointing back. I'm giving you the glory back. I'm giving you the fresh anointing back. I'm giving you, I'm giving you, I'm giving you the favor. 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 You didn't have it in the last season. Oh, but in this season. Come on, somebody. But in this season, God is giving you new faith. God is, ah, oh, hey, God is giving you new armor. God is giving you a new praise. God is giving you new worship. God is giving you a new mindset. God is giving you new attitudes and new spirits and new perspectives and new thoughts and new ideas and new concepts. The tide has turned. And you're going to get it back. You're going to get it back. You're going to give it back. God's going to make the devil take his hands off. 
God's going to make the devil return. And when the thief is found, he must return back sevenfold that which was stolen. Sevenfold. Oh my God, I felt that thing. Sevenfold. Sevenfold. Because the thief has been found. The thief has been discovered. And God is saying in 2021, you shall recover all. You shall recover all. You shall recover all. Somebody just start doing your hands like this. It's coming back into my life. It's coming back into my life. Tell your children. It's coming back into my life. Tell your husband. It's coming back into our house. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. My love for God. It's coming back. My praise. It's coming back. My anointing. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. My finances. They're coming back. They're coming back. My God, they're coming back. My God, it's coming back. My relationships. They're coming back. They're coming back. My church members. They're coming back. My buildings. They're coming back. My business. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. Somebody give God the praise. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet and give God a praise. I said stand on your feet and give God a praise. It's coming back into your house. The Ark of the Covenant is coming back into your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout. Somebody dance. Somebody Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. 2021, your year of recovery. 2021, your year to get it back. 2021, your year of restoration. 2021, God's going to anoint you. To take everything back into your life. Some of you, your youth is going to be restored. Your vigor, your vitality. Some of you, you lost a whole lot of sleep. God's going to give you rest. No, you don't hear what I said. God's going to give you rest. God's going to give you rest. Some of you, you lost years. You lost years and it got worse in 2020. But God said in this year, I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to give it back to you. I know what you've been through. I know how much you've cried. I know how much you've sacrificed. I know how much you have suffered. And I'm going to give it back to you in the day. Stand to your feet. The anointing of God is in this place. The anointing of God is in this place. The anointing of God is in this place. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new year. And God is turning it all around. 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 Turning it all around. Turning it all around. Come on, lift your hands and glorify Him. Come on, lift your hands and magnify Him right there in your house. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a fresh anointing. An anointing to get it back. An anointing to repossess it. An anointing to be reestablished. An anointing to be repositioned. An anointing to reset. An anointing to defeat your enemy this time. An anointing to destroy the Amalekites in the name of Jesus. Give him glory. 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 You made it to a new year. You made it. You made it. 
when so many others didn't. You made it. You crossed over. You crossed over. Give him glory. Give him glory. Now it's time to recover. 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 Time to recover. The church has been on the backside of the desert. You've been locked up in the house. You've been quarantined. But now it's time to recover. Now it's time to recover. Now it's time to come out. Now it's time to break out. Now it's time to break through. Now it's time to come forth. You're going to recover, David. You're going to recover, David. You're going to recover, David. You're going to recover it all, David. In the name of Jesus. 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 I'm getting it all back. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody worship the Lord tonight. Somebody worship the Lord tonight. Somebody worship the Lord right there in your house. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. Blessings are coming into your house. Blessings are coming into your house. God is sending help. 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 Is sending help. From strange places. From unfamiliar places. From uncommon resources. God is sending help. Uncommon places. Uncommon sources. God is sending it now. He's sending it now. He's sending it now. He's sending it now. He's sending it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. A mighty grace. A mighty anointing. Receive it now. You're getting it back. You're getting it back. You're getting it back. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. And running over. It's coming back. Into your hands. Into your life. Into your spirit. Some of you, you lost your vision. Because you were tied up to the wrong people. Were you recently in a car accident? Look at this is going to give you your vision back. God is going to give you your vision back. Some of you, you lost your way. You lost your way. Because you were, you, were you were around the wrong environment. And you lost your way. You lost your identity. Started doing things. And it wasn't even you. Got involved in certain things and with certain people that don't even fit you. And you lost your way. But God said, I'm going to give it back. I'm going to give back to you what you had before. And I'm going to increase it. In the year 2021. And in the days and months ahead, he's going to restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar and the locust has eaten. You're going to remember this service. You're going to remember this time. God has taken 2020 into full consideration. He allowed it to happen. And little did we know that he was using it to set us up for what he's about to do in 2021. I'm not saying that you won't go through anything. I'm not saying that you're going to just skate into your blessing. I'm not saying that there will not be any pain, that there will not be any struggle along the way. But what I am saying to you, that if you stay the course, if you walk by faith, 
if you apply these principles, it's all going to come back in a greater way and a greater portion. In the name of Jesus. I say to you all again, my brothers and sisters, welcome to 2021. The year, the year of recovery. The year to get it all back. The year of restoration. The year to be redeemed. To be brought back. To the place where you were meant to be. You were down. You were last. You were forgotten. But God is bringing you back. In Jesus name. Come on receive this word tonight. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. It's after midnight. You know it. I know it. This is your word. This is your word. It's your word. It's your word. Of recovery. Of recovery. You had to go through some things. You had to be forsaken. You had to be betrayed. You had to lose some things. Some people walked away from you. Because recovery is on the way. Restoration is on the way. Redemption is on the way. And he's sending help. He's sending help. You're not going to have to carry that load all by yourself. You're not going to be as stressed as you've been in the past. You're not going to be worried like you used to be. You're not going to be frustrated. And angry as you've been before. Help is on the way. My God, receive that in Jesus' name. Receive that in Jesus' name. I pray for you all that this word will be etched into your spirit and into your mind in the days moving forward. That you're going to recover. You're going to be redeemed by the hand of God. And God is not only going to redeem you. I've got to tell you this. He's also going to redeem the time. No, you didn't hear me. He's going to redeem the time. Because I'm talking to some people. And, and time got away from you. You lost some years. And God is telling you it's still not too late. Because he's going to redeem the time. And he's going to speed up the process. And it's not going to take you as long as you think. Because it's your time. For recovery. I speak this over you. I declare it. I decree it. Over your house. Over your family. In the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. In the name of the Lord. If you want to sow into this word, because I'm going to come back tomorrow morning with Brother Ryan. I'll be back Sunday to add more on to this. But if you want to sow into this thing tonight, you can do so by mailing it in at the P.O. Box address. P.O. Box 701066. Salt Lake City, Utah, 84170. Oh, or you can download the Venmo app and sow your seed through your iPhone, yes. through your laptop. Yes. Sow your seed. I'm sowing where I'm going. And I'm going into a place of recovery. I'm going to get it back. I'm going to a place of restoration and redemption. Sow that seed. P.O. Box 701066, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84170, or download the Venmo app. And may the blessing of the Lord continue to speak to you in this new year. The blessing 
is already moving. It's already flowing. It's already here. Receive it now by faith in Jesus' name. I've got to let you go. Have a blessed rest of your night, rest of your morning. Uh, again, we'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for more of what God is speaking as it relates to this year. It's a pivotal year. It's a crucial time for all of us. And we need this word to carry us further and to take us into our place of recovery. Listen, I love you. God bless you. Happy New Year to all of my family, my friends, all of you that are viewing and watching tonight. Have a blessed night. I'll see you soon. God bless.